I met Wayne Herkel in 2003 in Vancouver when I was just starting up my business and trying to get some information on photography and the city of Vancouver. I was told to talk to this guy Wayne. Called him up and we had a coffee. So much information, such a wealth of information. This guy loved to share every piece of technique and experience that he had. Uh, was really an open book and we then started working at Vancouver Photo Workshops together and Wayne was the tech for the school and also started to teach some lighting classes. I've learned a lot from this guy technically about photography and uh, his proficiency is ridiculous as well. So we're going to talk in this episode a little bit about some technical stuff but a whole lot about having uh, split personalities online and the different types of artwork that Wayne does. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, so we start now? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, so my name is Wayne Herkel. I'm a photographer. Uh, I guess I got my first camera in 1982, so I suppose I, it's when I would consider myself getting into the realm of photography. So. Uh, 82, I guess, was when I back, started. Back in the film days, hey? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, probably, I guess, I'm probably one of those people that did like a half and half thing. Half film, half digital at this point. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was um, definitely film back then. My first camera was a Canon AE-1 program, and I got an AE-1 program so that I could run it fully automatic um, until I learned how to use it um, and still have the pictures turn out. <laughs> So, um, the, the first stuff that you were shooting on film, um, I know that the, I mean, now where you've gone with digital is kind of totally different, but what was, what were the first things that you had kind of, that sparked your interest when you were shooting, uh, early on? Uh, well, basically the reason I got into photography is because I wanted to do something artistic, um, and I didn't have any kind of talents, like as far as drawing or, or things like that. Uh, drawing or painting or, or illustration or anything. I had no skills in that realm and uh, I thought photography would be uh, would be something artistic that I could do that I could learn to do or I didn't feel I could learn to draw. I mean, I think that's probably incorrect now. I'm pretty sure if you really want to learn to draw, you can do it. Um, but I, uh, I just at the time, I felt that the only way I could be artistic uh, or felt that it was a way that I could be artistic was photography and so... I got into it as an artistic pursuit, never had any, you know, it was like a hobby thing. I never had any inkling to go to, you know, school to basically become a professional or anything. Um, I just wanted to do it for myself, uh, for, um, you know, the art art of it, I guess. Wow. So that was, that was pretty early. I, I met you in... Two... Well, I moved to Vancouver in 1990 after photography school. Um, and so <laughs> which you ended up going to that. photography school then, right? Yeah. Yeah. I ended up going, I, after, Oh God, I don't know. Well, what happened is I went back to, I went back to, um, I went back to high school and I, I took, I didn't graduate. So I went back and I took photography and graphics in shop and, uh, it was, uh, it was give, gave me my five credits. It was like a half, a, it was a full, uh, full semester. Um, and, uh, so I was supposed to do photography in the first part and graphics in the second part. And I uh, ended up talking the instructor into letting me do photography for the whole project, and uh, so I, I ended up doing the whole the whole thing was photography. Not I didn't do any graphics, which is in that day was the old school ink up the plates and print and stuff. Yeah, because um, you've obviously just, you are obviously inspired by it. I mean, half of your work is more graphic illustration oriented than it is. Yeah, kind I mean, of traditionally photographic that, based. Yeah, when I started doing the photo illustration stuff many years ago, I think it's like over 10 or 12 now, when I was doing it on my computer, um, I, one day I told a friend of mine, I said, yeah, I finally become the, um, the uh, painter that I've always, or the, you know, the artist that I've always wanted to be, um, because I wasn't, I was working in an artistic manner, but um, that was outside sort of the bounds of photography, typical photography, um, but using only photographs and photographic imagery. So um, it's sort of, I kind of bridge the two worlds, I suppose, um, you know, photography and then, uh, you know, art and art artistic kind of stuff. I mean, if I could draw and paint, I'd probably be drawing and painting the kind of stuff that I do on my phone. 
to say. Right. So now, okay. So that's a per- that's a pretty big skip forward from a traditional camera to saying, you know, well, that's most of the stuff that I do on my phone. Uh, let's right. let's let's get into the middle of that just a little bit because okay. I I met you t- 2001, I think maybe 2002. It wasn't really. It wasn't. Yeah, it was right around there. I had finished up some some schooling again myself and had moved out to Vancouver, and I was I had kind of met up. Um, with a few people and I had to interview a photographer that I was inspired by and I was watching, you know, uh, some of your work and uh, the word around town uh, is that you were also an amazing lighting person. Um, so you kind of already had two sides of this career that I was really interested in when I was first getting to, to meet you. It was A, the artistic side like you were talking about, right? Uh, but, but B, you were also kind of doing some, some lighting and some professional gigs helping other photographers. Do you want to explain a little bit of that? Well, yeah, I mean, I the main reason I went to photography school was to get out to um, to, to get enough experience to be an assistant. Um, so I, I had a pretty good idea because I, I was a mature student when I went to. Um, um, I mean, age wise, I was mature. I wasn't very mature mentally, <laughs> but anyway, I, I went to I went to school to get the experience so that when I got out of school, I could become an assistant and work for commercial photographers and work my way up and blah, blah, blah. And so I did that. And, uh, and you know, through the years, I've done all kinds of different things, but um, that, uh, that was the reason I went to school was so that I had that experience. So I wasn't just green. Now in retrospect, I know that I could go and do it all over again and I wouldn't need to go to school. Um, you know, I just have to find the right connections and, and just still, because when you go to school, I mean, I love school and it was like one of the best experiences of my life. But when you go to school, you get out, uh, like in photography, you get out and typically you're out and you have to do the same thing you did even if you didn't go to school. You're just yeah. more prepared for it, I suppose. Yeah. So. Um, but do you, do you think at that point in time, I mean, the, so we're talking about, there, there, there was probably some online learning and there was some trading of information, but I mean, the, the learning process was also different. I mean, I was at university in 94 to 99, and it was the same, you know, kind of not a technical school, not really uh, pushing the career stuff that way, but um, you kind of had to know somebody, and really the only way to know some of those people were to kind of get into the school and then get introduced to those circles. Um, right. And now I think learning is totally different, obviously. Oh, yeah, um, really different. But... Um, you know, it was what it was at that point in time. So you did, you went to school and you wanted to be specifically an assistant and um, expand a little bit on that part of your career because you did, you know, I mean, you can name drop if you want. Well, yeah, you've I helped mean, a lot I, of big I mean, photographers just, and and you yeah. created some amazing, amazing lighting setups. Yeah, I mean, one of the things like basically I'm, I'm sort of known for lighting, but I mean, a good... Uh, well, um, most of that information came from assisting other photographers, especially when I started working with American photographers, you know, who are fairly big time, a lot of movie, uh, movie stuff and things like that. That's when um, I started to see all different kinds of lighting, all different kinds of modifiers, you know, some shoots we'd have four or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten setups, um, you know, for a movie shoot or things like that. And so that's when I really started. And because I was like a lighting geek anyway, and I love lighting and I just love the effect of lighting on a photograph and how you could completely change a photograph just on how you lit it. Um, I, I, I just ate all that information up. I just, you know, for me, it was just like, Oh, that's, I can use that. I can use that. I can use that. I can use that. So I basically just really loved lighting and I just thought it was such an important part of, um, controlling the, the image and the feel and the vibe of the photo. Um, and so for me, it became, um, it became like, it was like going to school for multiple years and I still, you know, learn stuff you know, daily. Well, not daily because I'm housebound now, but you know, I still learn stuff on jobs. I'll go on jobs and I'll be like, wow, that's really cool. I never thought of doing it that way before and stuff. So, um, but I, lighting for me is like a pretty big deal and a pretty big part of my photography. Yeah. Yeah. And that sort of, you know, fa- fast forward just a little bit. I mean, we started together at Vancouver photo workshops. Um, when Mark started that, uh, in the early two thousands. And I mean, that was really the role that that you kind of came in, I mean, as a, as a tech role, um, but also mm-hmm. kind of helping out with a lot of the lighting setups. And I mean, that's where I, that's where I started to learn a lot. I mean, it was, it was sure. daily learning. Like you said, you're, you're not housebound. I mean, you, we were in a school where there were eight other photographers and 10 other photographers that were teaching classes and each of them were teaching different lighting. Um, 
I think it was, I was inspired a lot by your lighting or at least the, um, like you said, you can always learn something new from lighting. So when you, once you learn the basics and then I started to watch the stuff that you did, like pick up like metal out of like the alleys and then somehow right. make this, um, you know, lighting reflector that obviously <laughs> doesn't <A> notice light. <laughs> well, it was, yeah, it just, it didn't, it didn't produce light that anybody else had. You were trying to make these really interesting, like unique, unique lighting setups using, you know, something as simple as even, you know, Ikea sheets over top of like two soft boxes or something like that. Like you, the, the lighting and the way that you manipulated light was amazing. And yeah. you never really stopped learning. And I don't think you did or are now. I think it's, you know, it, it always progresses, but that was a big inspiration for me. Yeah, well, I'm happy that I was able to do that. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I think uh, I think working in an environment like that, like a BPW, was very infectious. Everybody was like feeding off each other, and it was like a, it was like a family atmosphere. And yeah. uh, it was like I know, like I talked to Pui and Richard, and everybody, even Kit, and everybody all misses it because of that that you know that atmosphere of that familiar atmosphere, but also the just the the creative you know feeding off of each other and, and we had you know gallery shows every month and it was just like such an artistic time and such an artistic place that it was like really easy to be inspired yeah yeah i, I definitely feel since i moved from vancouver you know to windsor that was 2015 i feel a little bit of a vacuum uh, i miss out on on that sort of interaction especially with the the group of people that we were uh that we were interacting mm -hmm. with i mean it's these were people at the top of their craft in our city. And then, you yeah. know, reaching beyond that, we had some amazing photographers come in and, uh, mm -hmm. and teach their lighting stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, there, th so let's, let's touch on this just a little bit. Um, I don't want to go into a whole thing about us being stuck in the pandemic, but <clears throat> I was watching a Joe McNally post uh, about him being kind of in quarantine and pulling out old photography books and being inspired right. by one of them. Uh, or sorry, being inspired by them. And one of the books was uh, Gregory Heisler. Oh, yeah, right. And Gregory Heisler was one of our guests at, at Vancouver Photo Workshops. Um, yeah, he's awesome. A very funny guy, too. <laughs> oh, man, it, it was amazing, hey? Um, yeah. Out of those workshops that we put in or put out, uh, is, there, is there somebody that kind of sticks out in your head that really kind of like punched stuff maybe forward for you? Um, well, two, pe two people that I was really uh, so basically Douglas Kirkland came in and Douglas Kirkland I did the, he, I asked him if he'd sit for that portrait so I did that portrait which led to the portrait sessions work um, and that was uh, um, 182 I shot 182 men's portraits over two years and then that culminated with the ex exhibition at BPW um, and 80% of that exhibition is still up at a clothing store here in Vancouver um, called Brooklyn Men's Clothing. You can go down and see it all hanging up on their walls. <laughs> oh wow! And it's been up there for about five years. And I keep, I know the owner, and I keep asking him if he wants me to take it down. He goes, No. He goes, Our clientele really likes it. It's a high-end, casual menswear store. Um, but anyway, so that Douglas Kirkland was definitely one of the one of the people for sure. Mostly because he was an insanely, insanely nice person. Um, and he was nice enough to sit for me, which was I felt was very special. Um, and like I said, that that image and the way that I processed it out led to that series of 180 portraits. Another person who I really, really felt was amazing and I connected with just briefly, we went, we all went for dinner with them, um, was William Albert Allard, um, who's a that was another one of the books. <laughs> National Geographic photographer, blah, blah, blah. Again, another incredibly nice person, very inspiring, just a great, great man. Um, so those two probably stand out um, amongst the people that we had. Um, yeah, I think those were two that I really, really, um, you know, liked a lot. All right. So you've, you've touched on a really like two great points that I, I need to bring up. And that is your portrait series. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Um, you, I wouldn't say one, but I mean, you ended up on the cover of applied arts last year. Um, I've got that on a screen here, so I'm just going to pull that up, uh, just so everybody can see that. Um, so this is, this is the photo and the cover. I also ended up sitting, you know, for this photo series, and uh... yeah. Now this lighting is a bit different, though, than the, the portrait sessions lighting. The portrait sessions lighting was a um, an extra small box and a grid on the background. This is a, a 
um, a thing that I do in my studio where I, uh, I basically, uh, I just re-rigged it recently, where I basically, now what I do, I used to have a modifier coming down through a bed sheet, um, which you could do with a silk, but I buy bed sheets because they're inexpensive and they're fairly thick and they're a nice quality of diffusion. Um, so I would have a modifier, which for this one would have been a, a, a collapsible beauty dish. And it would come down straight down through the, like, very over top, straight down through the thing. And then what I do is I position the person front to back on the light. And and that gives me uh, gives me the lighting that I want to sort of sculpt on the face and stuff. Now, in this one, there's no catch light. So he's, he's you know, a bit far forward. But yeah. for this image, I don't mind not having the catch light. I, I like to try to get it if I can. But for this particular one, I need it doesn't need a catch light it's almost just, better without just it. the the texture um, on the on the jacket and the the smoke and yeah. like it, it's amazing and that's because it's it's very toppy and straight down it's like raking down down upon him now i could i could make this very frontally lit just by moving him back into that same light um what i've done at the studio now is i rigged a bed sheet in the in the ceiling and then i take two heads and i bounce them up into the ceiling and it's very long and tubular. And uh, so what I can do is if I shoot on one wall where I usually put up the black, I can march the person back to front and I turn off the back of the two lights and light with just the front one. But then if I do dance, I do it on the other wall and um, I can use both lights on a wider than 12 foot wall um, or a 12 foot background if I want. So it gives me the opportunity to turn one direction or the other and turn one pack on or off and quickly, yeah. um, quickly change up what I'm doing, but still have that same quality of light. I'm a big fan of, um, very big fan of soft quality light. Um, and a lot of people think if you have soft quality light, you can't have drama. But as you can see with the applied arts image, you can have all the drama you want with placement, right? So yeah. placement becomes a very crucial thing i mean i could do this with just like a grid too and it'd be a completely different looking shot but i just love that quality of soft lighting but um but positioned in such a way that it, it gives you drama um with like the highlights and shadows and stuff so another thing you touched I'm, on? I'm sort of of the mind you can't you can't have your, your light can't be too soft yeah <laughs> well like i like i said you had like a soft box and wrapped in a sheet and then another sheet and you made it the softest light yeah. it was pretty amazing um, yeah, yeah. But you touched on something else that I learned from you, and it was utilizing sometimes your studio space. I mean, right. to, to literally set up two portrait sessions or two lighting setups with almost no change in where your lights are positioned. And, oh, man, that, that was, I mean, are you, what size of studio are you in now? Are you still at the VPW kind of size, or where are you uh, at? No, no, it's quite a bit smaller. Um, it's um, it's pretty good though. Um, unfortunately, there's one area in the studio where the roof slants, and so that takes care that takes away a bunch of stuff that could be more useful. Um, but I I can have three setups going in the studio, um, um, like three backgrounds set up at one time. Now on those backgrounds, I could have more more than one lighting setup yeah. going, yeah. but I can easily do three. So um, one of the things that BPW was great for, and when I was teaching. Um, was uh, BPW had all these background walls and all these like places yeah. where you could shoot and you could shoot in the kitchen and da da da. And um, like if you go to the if you go out on the onto the men section of my website, there's a good chunk of photos in there that are from BPW. Like the huh, second here. one in the guy sitting in the blue chair, that's in the kitchen at BPW. Sorry, second one in the blue chair, got it. So. Yeah, that's in the kitchen of BPW, right? Yeah, and so. And, and uh, if you go, let me see if we go, how many more deep? I'm sorry, I'm just going to go a few more deep here. Um, I guess, oh, I think, you know, if you go to the Heroes and Villains, there's a lot of the stuff that's in BPW. Oh, yes, um, yeah, I remember you know, shooting a lot of these. Um, yeah, on that concrete wall and yeah, stuff like that. So, two so in... the, the thing about when I was teaching that really, really got me into that ability to, to change things up is I would teach – Every couple of months, I teach the same class, but I didn't want it to be the same class for me. Um, and also, you know, if there was repeat students, which there very often was, I didn't want it to be a repeat cast class for them, too. So I would change it up as much as I could from class to class, you know, from session. Like if I did a weekend seminar, it would if you could take it seven times and it would be different seven times. Right. Have different yeah. Models yeah. I would have, you know. Yes. Uh, there would be a lot of repeated content as far as, you know, this is how I do this and this is why I do this. But 
um, you know, I would try to vary it as much as possible, mostly for myself and as well for any repeat students. But um, and so that really got me into the thing of, OK, you know, you got to take what you've got and you've got to try to make the most out of that that you've got. Yeah. And so that's what I try to do in a studio space. Yeah. And that's what turned up a lot of the teaching there. I mean, that's what turned up the talent of all the instructors there, too, was that mentality. Yeah. We were always teaching, you know, kind of a regular rotation of people. And you wanted to always make sure that the foundations were explained, but right. then, you know, try and change things so that the images were a little bit different, that the uh, that we were also learning so that it, it stayed exciting mm -hmm. for us. Um, right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I want to go well, back. I mean, Go ahead. Uh, well, I was lucky in so far as the classes that I was teaching were like, you know, it was like fashion and editorial or lighting for fashion and editorial. So I could do whatever the hell I wanted. And I usually had pretty good. I mean, the class was not cheap, but I had pretty good models yeah. because of that and good hair and makeup. And a lot of the, a lot of the classes, like intermediate classes where you would shoot, you didn't have that luxury, unfortunately. No. So I was fortunate in the classes that I was teaching. There was a little, they were more expensive, but there was a bit more of a budget. So it allowed me to kind of, yeah, we, you know, we had the in-house classes more. and then we had your designer classes. That's what it was. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> so I was lucky in that, yeah. you know, that I could, uh, I could experiment a lot more and have a bit more, uh, a bit more kind of craziness going on. Yeah. And it was always amazing to see some of that. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the portrait series. If you don't, uh, you know, we're going to click into the portrait series on your website and you can sure, talk I'll about the uh, Douglas Kirkland site or the, the Douglas Kirkland shot there. Yeah, so when you when you click on that, um, you basically see that Douglas Kirkland. So I did this process. It's like all digital. Everything's digital. It's not an actual wet plate. Um, mostly because I, you know, I didn't have access to wet plate. I uh, I wanted that when I did the photo of him, I wanted it to feel old and iconic um, because you know obviously Douglas is an older gentleman and he's a very very iconic photographer. Um, you know, one could argue probably one of the most famous photographers ever. Yeah. Um, and um, so I wanted it to have an older feel and an older vibe, and I wanted it to, I wanted it to be really kind of like gritty and raw, and and so I, I did that and I processed it out like that, and I sent it to Douglas, and he really liked it, and I really liked it as well. And then I thought, well, I'm gonna do uh, a few more people, um, so I did some friends and stuff like that, and uh, people I knew, and I my idea was that I wanted to do say a dozen uh, to get a section on my website. Yeah, and. Um, so I, I, you know, started out by doing like a dozen and then it kept going and going and going and going and going <laughs> and, and then, going. Uh, I was with Richard and yeah. my friend Chris and we were having a drink one night and they said, you should do a show with that work. And I go, oh, yeah, yeah, I will. And they go, no, 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 no. You should do a show and you should pick a day right now. Otherwise, you're not going to do it. <laughs> just cut the project, so, right? Just just make sure so you're. Yeah. Yeah, so in the bar, and they were right. They, I would have just kept shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting. Anyway, they, we set a date on the calendar, and we booked it in the studio. So then I was committed. And uh, I was shooting people up until the last week of before the show. Um, in fact, I think a couple days before the show, I, sh I shot somebody uh, who was up from the U.S. that I knew. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I ended up shooting 180 people in, in two years, um, <laughs> ongoing. So it was a very simple lighting setup. Yeah. I mean, the Douglas one was a bit more complicated because I used to have a fill light when I started, but I abandoned the fill light, but it was basically an extra, extra small box with a grid on the face. And then, a, a gridded, um, a grid, a small grid, like 10 or 20 degree grid on the background. Um, and uh, it was a concrete wall. And then I ended up buying a canvas background from uh, Bo Photo that we did uh, Neil Gaiman with. Is, and that's um, in here. Uh, let me kind of click through. Yeah, Neil Gaiman should be in there. He's mm -hmm. one, two, three, four. Oh, you know where Neil Gaiman is? Because um, I think I put him in the famous one, but without the border uh, on it. So you can see the lighting setup. And it's also not as contrasty. Because oh, one okay. of the things I did with the sessions I is I made it as contrasty as possible and as sharp as possible. There it is. Um, so it basically aged everybody by about 10 years. All right. There's, but if you go to the, we got Neil, the Neil Gaiman shot yeah. in the uh, famous section, um, that's sort of what it looks like without all the, you know, the harshness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on um, the border and stuff. Uh, yeah, I had the, the the great opportunity of being on a couple of these shoots with you with Neil. Um, yeah. And Amanda Neil Palmer really and... Man, this lighting setup, oh, yeah. he was he was so good with you and he, he just yeah. he kept it going. He you know, he, he gave you time, which was really good. Um yeah. 
And the sliding well, and the setup. Gave us great. time when we were doing that stage one too, because the manager was like, "Come on, let's go." And, yeah. And Amanda was like, "Leave him alone, let him shoot." <laughs> so that was very nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and there's yeah. a you know in the the famous section here's a shot of David Suzuki. This is up beside you now. Um, um, right. Let me pull uh, that one up. Sorry. Yeah. So that was on that I shot a long time ago for a business magazine, and we shot it in his office, and then just went outside on the patio and. And the light was so beautiful. It was just open, open shade, available light. Oh it was just really yeah. nice. So I, I did that portrait. And then I, I shot a bunch of them outside. And then he looks at me and he goes, you're probably done, right? And I went, <laughs> uh, yeah, 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 I'm done. <laughs> yep. Uh, that's nice. that's your cue, nice. right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he was nice. Um, and who else do we have in here? Um, well, there's Art Stryber, who's a very famous photographer as well. Oh. Again, Art I shot for the portrait session, so that's the portrait session's lighting, but that's, again, without all the sauce on it, I right. guess. And then uh, we got some heroes and villains. All right. David, Jim Pattison is one of them, and then the other gentleman who's got the sort of 4x4 four by four, uh, four by four film border around is, um, um, he was running for the mayor of Vancouver. He's passed away, um, uh, Jim Green. Oh. Yeah, sorry, so, yeah. I've clicked away from that page, so our viewers are going to have oh, to actually now search, which is okay because your links are literally up there. Cool. There, bam. Yeah. And uh, so we have two links up here. So the first one is is WAPIX, which is where we're at and where we're looking at. Um, I'm going to call it like this is. I'm going to call it traditional photography in a sense. It's it's yeah. it's yeah. pretty. I guess it's pretty straight. I mean, I know that there's a lot of processing and a lot of work that went into it, and it, there was a lot of development with this, and it, it obviously shows um, the applied arts cover. I mean, that's a that's a that was a pretty big deal, you know? Um, yeah, I mean, um, I, I so what happened is I, I I've been submitting to applied arts since I moved out here in like 1990, and uh, on and off. Not, not every year, but on and off. And then I'd finally given up at one point. I was like, I'm never going to get in that magazine. And I'd given up. And then last, or I guess it was like the year that the, the magazine, that it was accepted, I, I decided to submit. I submitted two images, um, the one that got the cover and another one. And um, and I just like submitted and thought, okay, well, I'll see what happens. And then I get um, I get my thing from Plight Art saying, you've been accepted to the thing. And so I was thrilled i was like oh my god i got accepted oh that's so awesome and and that shot and it's great and i love it and uh and then about two weeks later the art director emailed me and he said uh, george i believe is his name he said i really like that image that you submitted and i was wondering if you would mind if we put it on the cover of the illustration annual photo illustration annual and i was like no i don't mind at all i'd be thrilled so anyway i sent um I, he said send me a bigger copy so i sent him the bigger copy and so that's uh that's sort of how that came about one of the things that i'm most happy about with that image is that it was uh an image that i did for myself with a friend of mine there was no uh, art director, there was no client, there was nothing. It was just me and a friend going in the studio, having fun, being creative, um, got a shot that, you know, worked, I guess. And uh, and so I got in, I basically, I look at it as I got in on my own terms. Yeah. Um, and I didn't get on in on the coattails of an advertisement or, you know, something like that. It was just, I got in there because of, you know, yeah, yeah, your own project and, and 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 having fun and just like doing photography but for the reason I personal I projects to. were <laughs> personal projects were really important I think to to all of us there to to really push us and um, honestly it's some of the personal projects I mean did this get you a little bit more work did that kind of commercially nope. help out no <laughs> <laughs> no none that I know of as of yet uh, note I mean, the I younger photographers hey who are all and, you know one of the things that, that the biggest response I got was probably from my peers. And the thing about getting that kind of recognition is, uh, is that's probably the best recognition because they know, they know what it takes to get there. Um, you know, they know how difficult that sort of thing is. And, and so, and when your peers start liking what you do, what you're doing, that means you're doing something right. Yeah. Um, I think so. That's one of the, you know, so that recognition for me was, was, you know, the, the, the bonus on top of getting the cover and getting in there was the, the recognition from my peers. I mean, if I get a job from it, sometimes they say that stuff takes a couple of years, you know, yeah. 
Um, like it might be sitting on some art director's desk and they'll have some ad campaign or something and they'll look at it and they'll go, oh, that shot's perfect and let's call that dude. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> but, then the funny knows, thing is, is we'll you might be onto a whole other project or a whole other lighting thing and you're like, oh, we got to go back to that. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things I did last fall is I did a um, uh, different lighting setup again, but I shot uh, a series of senior dogs specifically just for my website. I'm not going to do 180. Um, but I did about 25. I haven't put that section up yet. Oh, okay. It was very fun. It was like, it was like just super cool to shoot these like older senior dogs. Yeah. Uh, sadly, a couple of them have already passed away. Ones that I photographed, so that was upsetting. But yes, that, anyway. but that the dog portrait lighting or the dog yeah, mm -hmm. those similar to the portrait series, right? The 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 lighting uh, setup. Well, that one no, it's actually more similar to the applied arts one. But what I did is because I definitely wanted the animals to have catch lights, is I had a fill light just over camera so it's kind of a combination right. of a top down and a fill and they're almost at, a, at even exposures um unfortunately i don't have well there you know where you can see them is on my instagram the the wapix instagram you can see the dog stuff uh, um let me see wapix but it was really cool the the personalities of some of the animals and stuff and uh and i don't know it was just super fun i really liked it um i sometimes i like animals better than people especially dogs <laughs> <laughs> All right. So generally, uh, I like people I photograph, but there's a lot of people I don't like. <laughs> yeah, there. So Wapix, uh, Wapix and Ordeal both on Instagram as well. Um, but right. I'm gonna pop I also up. I have another one too. <laughs> of course, split personality. I have, I, have I have the Mighty Wa, which is all shots done on my phone. Everything's shot on my phone and processed on my phone. Um, and yeah. Currently, currently on that, I'm working on a thing that. Puya spearheaded during this isolation so it's an isolation challenge so it's a different shot every day for 30 days and so what i decided to do was shoot uh people or things um well social distancing mind you if i shoot people um people or things in isolation uh or that are isolated from other things so it's been pretty interesting and a pretty good challenge uh, in fact right after i leave here i'm going out to shoot today's thing because i have a specific idea for today um so that um that site is just or that that one is just all my phone everything's shot on all my phone it. everything's processed on my phone all right and which um, sorry so it was the mighty wah it's uh yeah at, 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 yeah the mighty wah at the mighty wah oh on instagram so yeah on instagram i don't have a website for that stuff because it's you know basically just more instagram when i got on instagram i decided because it was a, a phone sort of app and whatever i thought well why don't i see what i can do with just my phone and how creative i can be with just my phone no camera no nothing right and then that um that sort of also led me to doing the photo illustration stuff which i think you want to talk about in a bit um which i was doing on the computer but now i do on my phone yeah so. all right i didn't know that this little guy geez you got him all over the place split personality yeah huh? I, uh, I probably shouldn't have uh, three Instagrams. It's a bit daunting at sometimes. So, um, yeah, sometimes it's, I, I, I want to slap myself for doing that. But unfortunately, I've made my bed. Now i got to sleep in it. Oh, yeah. So. I've had my own issues with split personalities and trying to keep sometimes commercial stuff separate from art stuff. And, yeah, yeah and then you kind of down the road, you're never sure if you made the right decision. Uh, right. Because yeah. you get a job all you. of a sudden from cr something creative, and you're like, "Oh, I had no idea that anybody was looking at that for that reason." Um, right. It it, yeah, it yeah, is yeah. interesting. So yeah, I do want to touch on your photo illustration stuff, um, mm -hmm. simply because this was another thing, you know. Man, simply, I didn't know where your head was going with a lot of a lot of this. It was just pretty amazing to kind of see this. Uh, so I'm just going to jump to, um, I'm just going to jump to my ordeal uh, yep. site here real quick. Sorry. But yeah, anyway, go on. Um, uh, but all of these, you know, I mean, essentially, you know, weird fever dream, sci-fi kaleidoscope of, you know, images, uh, and then watching you create these, the way you created them, the way that, uh, like each of these were, well, I, you know, you'd pick up gears out of the alley or like these nuts and bolts and then you'd come into the school and you'd kind of like photograph these little pieces and you're like, Wayne, what are you, what are you photographing these for? And you're like, I, I don't know. And then, then, yeah. <laughs> then you'd show up like, you know, a couple of weeks later with, with these images. So I, I now have, oops, sorry, we popped a little too quick. Now, are you on, are you on our deal? I'm on our deal right on the main page there. So we have the, uh, oh, okay. the, the beautiful, uh, 
man. The, yeah, the so colors. If you go to, I guess if you go to um, the present, it'll have uh, more of the newer work. Yep. Uh, so so. I'm, I'm going to click into the second image, which is almost like a sacred heart and a, and a gold kind of wings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think if you go to the, oh no, sorry. Um, yeah. Sorry. Anyway, I'm on to the third image now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the blue one. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, so let's yeah, talk so a little bit be... about this. We'll bring this up uh, kind of full screen for everybody. Let me get your name off there. Okay. Are um, we on the blue one? Or... Yeah. Yeah. So let's okay. talk a little bit about, you know, kind of your creative process or even some of the um, inspiration for these. Um, okay. Well, that's the, that's the weird part is so when, when I do these, um, Basically, so everything, everything subject matter wise is mirrored, um, mostly because I really like symmetry and balance and blah, blah, blah. And, and it just to me, it just feels right to do it that way. So I started mirroring everything. Now, the important thing when you mirror a person, sometimes they look like they do and sometimes they look like a monster or an alien or something, uh, which is sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, anyway, so that was one of the things everything had to be mirrored so that was one of my i had a few little rules around it the other thing is everything had to be uh when i started doing it on the computer everything had to be a photograph um that i had taken with my camera so i it had to be a photograph that i took of almost everything and still to this day 99 percent of them are uh just made with images that i taken myself so that was another sort of rule that I had and then after that there was no there was no thought process other than those two things and what I like basically none of these are ever planned um, I don't sit okay. down and I go I want to do blah 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 this or that well there's not none of them there's a couple where I've had some I've done up for jobs and stuff like that and, and specific assignments where they were they were planned but for the most part 90% of them are not planned I just sit down at the computer I take the subject which is usually usually almost always female um, and then I um, and then I start working and adding layers in and uh, playing around and these ones on the computer when I used to do them they would sometimes take six to twelve hours when I first started doing them I would basically sit there for six to 12 hours and work on them. Sometimes I'd sit there for like nine hours and then I'd, it'd be like five in the morning and I'd go to bed and then I'd get up at like 10 and I'd start working on it again um, till I finished it. But then after a while I adopted a more of a painter's kind of approach where um, I had to let the paint dry, only there was no paint. I would just do them, I'd work on them. Sometimes I'd work on them for 10 minutes. Sometimes I'd work on them for three or four hours. Um, but then I'd go away and I'd come back. And sometimes I'd leave them overnight and then I'd get up and I'd go away and I'd come back. And so once I started doing it that way, I found I um, uh, they, they improved quite a bit. Yeah. Um, where I just didn't plunge in and just go, 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 go. But again, I still never planned them. What happens though is about halfway through the process, or at a certain point through the process, they start to take on, um, they start to take on a direction, I guess, and then I start moving in that direction. Then some of the choices I make are conscious. They're like, oh, okay, I want to boo, I want to add something there, I want to do this, but only a little bit. Like I'm, I'm still playing around. I still don't know where it's going to end up. Um, so I don't really know where it's going to end up until it's over. Yeah. Now the ones on the phone, which I so on the computer, I've probably done in ten or fifteen years. I've done probably fifty on okay. the computer, maybe maybe more, maybe sixty, seventy total. Mm -hmm. um, when I started doing them on my phone, which this October will be three years, I'm well over three hundred. Wow! And uh, which um, series can we can we sort of see the newer that's series? That's the Sci Phone series. Yeah. Sorry, which so what happened? Is that on the web page here? No, uh, it should be on or uh, ordeal art. Uh, no, none of them are on my web page. No, oh. yeah, okay. Oh, so, <laughs> so we're on the Instagram. On the Instagram. Yeah, right. sorry, I'm making you jump around. That's okay, that's what I have. Uh, yeah, all they're these all only on for. Instagram. All right, there's a there's a most of them are on ordeal art or, or a bunch of them are on ordeal art. There is a bunch still on Wapix that I can't really transfer over. So they just have to live on Wapix. Um, but that's why I separated those out because the, the photo illustrations were starting to take over all the imagery. And I was like, I got to do a new Instagram because um, it's just taking over that whole thing. Because, you know, like I said, I've done well over 300 now. Now, the thing about the phone ones is 
I found an app where I could do where I could do layering and masking. So what happens is I get two layers and a mask, then I go out of the program, then I come back in, I get two layers and a mask, <laughs> go out, come back in. But the thing about the phone that's good and bad is it's got limitations insofar as after two or three times in and out, the you're you're not improving it. Your your the the, the quality the, is not changing, it's not making it better. So you have to you have to cut your losses and just say, Okay, this is it, it's done. Now, that being said, I've learned how to manipulate the program and manipulate my way of working with it where I can get quite complicated looking imagery by just going in and out two or three times. Whereas on my computer, there'd be 50, 60, 100 layers on that stuff, right? Yeah, so so, so you're not, not using Photoshop on your mobile for this? this is no, a- Photoshop won't do what I want it to do. I use a program called Union. Oh wow! And it's the only one that'll. I've tried. I've looked at other ones because I thought if Union ever goes away, I'm screwed. <laughs> yeah, um, you're locked because, in by an app now, um, eh? Yeah, I'd probably have to develop my own app at that point. So that I had an app that I could work with because <laughs> if I I'd be messed up if Union went away. Um, so every time there's like an iPhone iOS update, I'm like, oh god, I hope it works. I hope it works. Oh my god, yeah, yeah. So updates are kind of scary now really when you're doing this stuff, eh? Awesome. What's that? I said uh, updates are a little bit scary when you're doing stuff like this and it's proprietary. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I, I don't understand why I can't do it in Photoshop. I've tried. Maybe there's, I think there's a few iterations of Photoshop and Instagram. Maybe I just don't have the right one. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, works. So. I use a few. There's, you know, a, yeah. Adobe Comp is one, and then there's Adobe uh, oh, really? Photoshop Express. Comp is a is may or See, may not might get me to where i want to be maybe uh, yeah. i just need the ability to layer and mask yeah and blend modes yeah i that's think that's I that's pretty layer much mask and blend modes. yeah i think so so if i have those then i'm i'm good to go so. awesome this now is... the one thing about union is is you can get in there and you can paint out masks with your finger but obviously that's a very yep. inexact science so lots of my masking you'll notice will be uh like especially circular shaped like I'll bring out the mouth and the and the nose and the and that so that you can tell it's like a human, um, and the eyes and stuff like that. So lots of those masks are. Um, I'm just gonna quickly jump to the jump to the Instagram. Um, here. Yeah, I got the first nine up on the screen now, full size. Um, so Insta. Sorry. Uh, which one do I want to see if I can log in under Wapix? Uh, damn it. Oh, you know, oh, there we go. Or DLR. Okay, here we go. Yeah, so, um, so you can see they, they don't look, they look about as complicated as the stuff that I've got on the computer, but, you know, they're much, much, <laughs> much less, um, much less time spent generally. Um, also, I've gotten pretty good at knowing what I like and knowing what's working. So if something's not working, I just abandon it right away. Um, and, uh, and, or if I, I run into an issue, I can usually work through it yeah. um, to get me to where I want to be. So, um, but you know, I could create one of these every couple of days. Yeah. Um, usually is, is this I, I hardly ever go. Is this kind of a little bit of that, that like, there's definitely a, two ways that you're going with your imagery. This seems to be a little bit more of your playful way. You're getting away right. from um, the photograph itself. And then, mm-hmm. and then on the other end, when you look at some of your photos, light, that lighting is so tight. Like you're working within like inches or millimeters, like you say, moving somebody in and out of a light. Um, and yeah. the way that you've perfected some of that lighting. Um, is this the, the kind of two sides to Wayne? Is <laughs> Yeah, I mean, um, like with my lighting, I'm, I'm always uh, interested in drama with lighting. Like, um, you won't see too many. I mean, if you look on my website, there's a few white background shots um, and things like that. I mean, I know how to shoot on white background. I know how to light on white background. I know how to light really open and soft and pretty. And I mean, there probably isn't uh, a type of lighting I haven't experienced either working with someone else or done myself. So, um, but I just prefer drama. I always have ever since you know, back in the day when I first, first got into uh, photography, I was always more interested in the drama of the lighting and, and uh, the drama of the photograph. And my, the photographers that I like, you know, are, are just, you know, tend to be more on the dramatic side as well. Um, and the art that I like and stuff, uh, um, you know, same sort of thing. Yeah. 
I like very illustrative kind of art. Like one of my favorite artists um, is an uh, uh, artist from L.A. named Dan Quintana. Um, he's on Instagram. It's at Quintana Art. But just love his work. Like he's so immensely talented. And every time I see a new piece by him, it blows me away just how talented he is. And so those kind of people inspire me to kind of keep pushing and pushing and trying to be a better artist. And then as far as photography goes, I mean, my, my favorite photographer ever, ever was a guy named Philip Dixon, who was an L.A. based photographer. Okay. Last time I was down in L.A., I found his house where he lived. I basically stalked his house, <laughs> which is near Venice Beach. I just wanted to walk by it and see it. If you ever uh, get a chance, look up Philip Dixon house in uh, in Los Angeles. And they are, it, um, they're, it's used for photo shoots and for filming a lot. Okay. It's the most insanely beautiful house. And it's in, smack dab in the middle of Venice. California you'd never even know it's there and it's insanely beautiful but anyway so he's he, he from way 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 back when before I even went to school was a was a major influence and someone who I look up to and nowadays my favorite photographer is probably Eugenio Raquenco who's a Spanish photographer um, who just does amazing amazing work and again his lighting is impeccable and styling and da -da. he also directs and stuff now but he's uh he's somebody that uh very is very very inspiring to me at this point so well um, amongst all the other photographers but. i think this is this is a really good spot to put this in because I, I i know that you know you've worked a long time at those two the illustration the photography um and a little bit like myself as of late you've kind of shifted a little bit of your work too you produced a little bit of a, a movie <laughs> and you're starting to work in in moving imagery a little bit. You've done some music videos. Uh, do you kind of do you see that as being something you're going to do a little bit more in the future, or is that was that just a little bit of an experimentation, kind of a side thing? And, and it, yeah, know? well, at the time, I thought I thought that's what I was going to do. I thought I was going to try to really start to move into um, into filmmaking and going into that realm. I did. Uh, I did some bunch of music videos, and then I got funding from Telus to do that short, The Man of the Dog, the sci-fi yeah. short, which basically was an idea that I uh, I came up with. And um, you know, when I got the funding, uh, miraculously, and then I was like, oh my god, I got to make a movie. So that was <laughs> tricky, and I probably couldn't have done that without Richard's help. Uh, Richard right. Davies was one of the producers, and and uh, you know, and, and pretty much everybody else that worked on it because nobody really got paid. Um, uh, like the editor got paid, the Foley people got paid. And um, and that was about it, I think. Uh, everything else went into the production. Um, but anyway, so then fast forward after that, then Richard and I started working on a documentary um, on a motorcycle builder here in Vancouver called Paul Brody. And um, so we were on that, and then that sort of stalled a bit at the moment for various reasons. But what happened is I basically developed an, uh, a really major dislike for the process. Um, and so I don't really pursue it anymore. Um, and I've kind of given up on the motion side. I mean, if somebody approached me with a project and I thought it was kind of cool, especially if it was like a dance project or something, I'd be like, yes, I would probably do it. But yeah, okay. the frustration for me was the amount of time that it takes to finish something, especially when there's no money in it. Yeah. You know, like I did music yeah. videos and it took like a year to get it out the door. Yeah. Well, after a year, I don't care about it anymore. I stopped caring about it like six months before that and yeah. so it became just a way 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 more of a frustration and it wasn't artistically satisfying anymore it just became uh, too daunting for me i just needed more immediate um uh immediate gratification i guess yeah, artistically that's and totally so fair I pretty much abandoned it uh, yeah. at this point so yeah but never say never right well, I think on that photographic end, I mean, it's like uh, drawing or painting. It just takes so much goddamn time if you're yeah. creating a film uh, or you're creating yeah. a video. And like you say, the, the, the timeline is so much different. We were, we're used to yeah. being in an environment where you're, you're locking down things into like 60th of a second, 125th of a second, and like stuff's done yeah. and you get to go to your editing and, you know, you can kind of finish yeah. up within a day or so. Um, I'm kind of dipping my toes into that too. It's shifting a little bit of the way that I'm, I'm looking at things. Uh, obviously, even the way that the cameras are being produced now, there's a lot more like concentration on, on getting more light in it for video and stuff like that. So that's kind of changing yeah. some of the gear that I'm using, like the, the Nikon Z series. Um, ha have you, like, is, is your camera gear shifting with some of this stuff too, or are you still? Um, well, I have a, I have a Canon, um, well, yeah. 
my phone is probably the thing yeah, yeah. I the most. <laughs> okay, there you go. That's um, the biggest shift too, right? You know, like in the, well, okay, so basically I sh I'm shooting with a Canon right now. I'm kind of waiting for these new mirrorless Canons to be, uh, to come out to see what they're offering. Because I don't think, I'm on a 5D Mark III. I wasn't super thrilled with the 5D Mark IV. Um, and so I, uh, I didn't purchase that. Um, so I'm waiting for the newer Canon yeah. offering. I, ta I, I, I thought about maybe switching to Sony at one point, but then I wasn't, I just wasn't working for me. Um, and mirrorless wise, I have a Fuji system, um, uh, that I use as a travel camera. So whenever I go right. traveling, I take, uh, it's an X-T2. So, so I take that with guy. me for travel. Yep. Um, and then I really was looking at those Fuji medium format, like the rangefinder and stuff. Um, because they're insanely nice cameras and they're beautiful imagery and for my portraity kind of stuff. But again, they're a bit out of my price range for what I'm doing right now. So um, I guess I'll sort of sit tight and see what Canon comes you, up with. Do you remember Robert um, Faulkner? Yeah, yeah, I follow him on uh, Instagram. Yeah, he's yeah, he's photographer. yeah, but I, I think he's he's, he's also a Fuji ambassador. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's always kind of neat to touch base with some of those people again as this technology because you know he's got access to that. I even talked with uh, Drew Guerin when the new right. Nikon's came out because he shot uh, the he shot the Z series like the 35 um, 1.2 or whatever they made for that. Just a beautiful, beautiful lens. But you right. know, it's kind of interesting to talk to those guys about the new technology that's coming out, um, how it's changing some of the way they're working, and some of it yeah. is you know they're still. You know, I, I, I hold on to my my mirrored cameras. I don't know. Mirrorless yeah, yeah. is still a game, but yeah, I'm just not sure where it will go. I'm, I'm excited. Well, I, I basically, uh, I don't know. I guess when I really, really started to get going on Instagram on my Mighty Wa uh, account, the one that's all phone, I, I started to realize that the, the phone was making me a better photographer because what I was doing with the phone is I was – going out, like if you go back through a bunch of those pictures, you'll see a lot of stuff, um, like I, I would just see lighting, you know, looking really cool, like maybe I'd be on set, or maybe I'd be in a bar, and I'd go out, you know, leave the bar with some friends, and I'd, man, that lighting's so cool, and so I would take pictures anywhere, because I always had a camera with me at all times, and so that, that really um, developed my, I mean, I have a pretty developed eye anyway from years of being in the business, but it really developed my eye even more for just spotting like, oh, look at that, look at that, look at that. And, and it just also got me looking at things more. So I, I think that that really um, made me a better photographer. Uh, at one point, the phone just like made, opened up my eyes a bit more than they were already opened anyway. So um, I do like the phone. I have that new iPhone 11 because it has three lenses and like I was waiting for something like that to come up, and and so I I love that, um, but I still shoot with my other cameras, and uh, and I'll you know I always will for yeah. sure. But all right, um, well, the phone uh, definitely changed things for me. Even. That is kind of a really good place to sum all of this up because it is a shifting technology. Sure. It's uh, <laughs> it's it's changed a lot of stuff in the way that you work. Um, yeah. I think it's interesting because it, it it's a thread that follows a lot. Uh, I've been reading a little bit and uh, kind of. Uh, following a little bit of Chase Jarvis, uh, also, you know, one of the first kind of camera apps, the perfect camera. Um, oh, um, right, right. And he talks about it, too, how much it changes your eye. And it doesn't really, it allows you a lot of, uh, a lot of freedom. It's, it's almost like a sketching and it's like, it's like a training for your, your brain and your eye. And it's really loose, but, and, and it's, it's exciting. Like it, it seems to be the thing that, that is helping a lot of the other people that I know are commercial or, or heavy art photographers that have process, 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 process. Yeah. It's all of a sudden giving that, that spark back and, and a little bit of excitement back. So, you know, one of the things like with the, with the phone illustrations of the iPhone series, I can do those anywhere. So if I'm on like a movie set for like 12 hours and sitting around for like 11 of those 12, I can sit down and make art. Uh, I've also done these while I've been walking. I walk a lot and I've been out walking and on my phone, I've literally been making art as I walk. And then when I have to do some really serious masking, then I have to stop or sit down and then I do that, that serious little mask with my finger. And then I, you know, keep going, but I've literally made these, some of these while walking. Um, yeah. So yeah, I can do them anywhere basically. That's yeah. awesome, and Wayne. Anywhere at any times. So. Wayne, it's uh, it's been awesome catching up with you. Uh, 
Yeah, good to catch up. Thank you for for sharing, you know, again, from the from the beginning point from Vancouver to now kind of sharing all the knowledge that you've had with photography. It's always inspiring. Um, for everybody that's watching, I'm going to toss that link back up there. So everybody's got your your info right there. Um, both um, websites. And yeah, if people want to follow the Instagrams. That's fine. One of the things that I am doing, though, just so people know, is, is I would follow anybody that would follow me on my accounts. And so then I was following everybody on three accounts. So I was getting so much repeated content. I decided I can't do that. So what I do is if somebody follows me on all three accounts, I follow them on one account so I can see their stuff. And I cannot like, cause I was seeing so much repeated content. I wasn't seeing everybody's content yeah. and that was very frustrating for me. So I, uh, like if I don't follow you on one of those accounts, I'm following, like I'll, I generally you'll, follow everybody on one account. You'll find sure. somebody. Yeah. You'll yeah, find them. So. It's, it's important for us to follow all three of yours. That's the key because. Well, they're, they're I not, put different content on all three, so it'll yeah. never repeat. That's for sure. <laughs> all right. Wayne. You'll see different stuff and, you know, follow which one you like or follow none of them. It's up to you, I guess. <laughs> All right, Wayne. Well, well we're going to sign off here for everybody. Seconds. You hold on two yeah. seconds. Uh, yeah, thanks. And stay right. safe. Thank you. Okay, bye, man. Ciao. 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 Big thank you to Wayne for taking the time out and uh, being one of the first people that I talked to on this series. Uh, I appreciate all the information that he's not only given to me, but back to you guys. And it was great to kind of share his work and uh, in this weird jumbled kind of setup, hopefully share th that work with you guys. So be sure to check them out on Instagram. There are a few. We've put those links uh, all through that video. Check them out. Give them some love. Shifting Perspectives is made possible by Pretty in the Algorithm. We're a company focused on creating custom visual content that connects your audience with you and with each other. PrettyintheAlgorithm.com.